You don't want to close your eyes. It's, it's going to be broken. Okay? Okay. Ow! How's your butt? Puckered. That's better than what I was thinking it might be. What happened? Oh, uh, you don't remember? All I remember is a weird swishing sound. Okay, let's not talk about it then. Uh, okay. Welcome to Horror on Air. Where we talk all things horror. On the air. So, welcome back to the two of us. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I Henry, am no longer kidnapped. Well, as far as you know. Uh, Still hurts. <laughs> um, today, uh, we've been given an assignment from Mr. Corduroy. This is, this is what I mean. Uh, you gotta, by, we got to listen to Mr. Corduroy. Right. Um, I can't. I can't hear you scream like that anymore. I can't have my innards touched that way anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take it to a whole other level, Henry. Why not? No. <laughs> I mean, have you ever had your belly button licked from the inside? Mm, no, a I'm, not, can? I'm not opposed to, to trying. With a Pringles can and a de- never mind. Never mind. The decorative touches. I'm cutting that out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Let that roll. <laughs> so today we are discussing the Universal monsters. All of them. Yeah. Uh, now these are the these are the really really famous ones. But how did we get to that point? That's not the first ones that Universal made. Right? No, they are not. Uh, they were the first ones that took light. So whenever you hear Universal monsters. Normally comes to mind Dracula, Frankenstein, the mummy, the mummy creature, the, the invisible man, right? But Phantom of the Opera, right? Phantom of the Opera and one of the uh, originals. And that to to me that one of of the the two early ones, um, that one's the one that's actual a horror movie. Uh, yes. The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Notre Dame, what the fuck ever you want to, however you say it. That was, that was a horror movie in its time because it was... Because of the grotesqueness of right. Quasimodo. Uh, thanks to Lon Chaney. Yes. Um, the Man of a Thousand Faces. <laughs> the Man of a Thousand Faces. Did his own, this was before, uh, you know, you had special, special effects makeup and stuff like that. Right. And, he, one of the founding fathers of... Right, special effects as we all know it today, and and the the first horror movie star, really, I think. Yeah, you could. There's definitely a strong argument. It's definitely for argument. that. Yeah, um, but so yeah, he he kind of got the ball rolling with Universal. Yes, um, and they had some moderate success with some movies after that. Uh, and then that was 1923, and I think The Phantom was 25. Um, some moderate success in the in the years after, and then we hit 1931. Yes, which is when Dracula Dracula came out. Fantastic fucking movie. Bela Lugosi. Yep. Um, very very gothic style mannered movie. Right. Uh, 
in my opinion, kind of the grandfather of modern day horror movies. Right. Remember, I did that one little video because Dracula came out on Valentine's Day. Yes. And a couple of days later, we realized that, and I did a little video. Right, um, just because we're a, we're a dollar short and a day late on. We we fucking work for a little. A lot okay? of things. We're not these goddamn seventeen year olds that can get on here and put a fucking video up, you know, every three hours. Okay. Right. We got shit to do. Mm -hmm. We love y'all, but so far y'all ain't paying the bills. Y'all want to start? I'll be on this motherfucker every day. Sitting all kinds of shit. Might even spread my butt apart. Right. Under, but um, under the name of my concho. Just want you to know, I spread my butt. Jesus, it's my concho. Um <laughs> but so so yeah, uh Bela Lugosi was playing Dracula on the stage yes. for several years and like was very popular as the character. Uh, Bram Stoker's wife uh wanted too much for the rights for the movie, and she was a fan of his. So they actually talked to him to talk her into lowering the price uh, for the rights, which he did. And then he still had to try out for the fucking part. That's some bullshit. That is some bullshit. And then he didn't get, he got paid like a quarter of what the other actors and shit were getting paid. Right. But whatever, teach their own. My man became a fucking horror legend. So he did. Whatever. Um, but yeah, so Dracula. Absolutely great success. The gothic uh, darkness of it. The movie is very, just, it's very dark. You know, a lot of black, you know, and just heavy grays mixed with very small hints of white. High contrast. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it was good. Great movie. It was a good fucking movie. Um, I think everybody should watch it. Um, I really liked. Uh, I, I don't know the, the actor's name, but Grenfield in this, the yes, the insanity and everything was was great. Um, but uh, I think overall, I mean, overall, everybody did great. But you can't touch Bela Lugosi. Uh, and Dracula. His, his performance in Dracula was awesome. One hundred percent. He had a lot of practice, so he yeah. should have been. And that was followed up with Frankenstein. Yes, same year. Yep. And we get introduced to what who would also become another horror legend, Boris Karloff, uh, and the amount of makeup yes. that they put on his head and face. Yes. <laughs> was It'd be enough to drive any man crazy. Right. And Frankenstein, much like Scooby Doo, taught us that the monsters are really ourselves. That's right. That's right. That was the whole purpose of wearing the Scooby Doo shirt. It was just for that one bit right there. Nice. I feel like I can die happy, man. Now the movie is great, but it destroyed me of how how sad that movie was. I remember as a kid. Now, of yeah. course, this is you know I grew up in the eighties, so this movie wasn't ever going to be scary to me. But I remember watching it and feeling so sad. It's a very weird, complex movie. Mm -hmm. um, and if and if you watch movies the same way that we watch movies, there's no, you can't just watch it and then be good or bad. And you right, know, we, you dissect everything. You, you peel the at, layers out and everything. Right, you like every movie's like an onion. Uh, what about Pauvet, everybody loves Pauvet. <laughs> there's a lot of multiple different you know, layers and thought processes and emotions that go through, you know, that movie. It's not, you know, it's a live, you know, wreak havoc. Right. Oh, we need to put him down. He's misunderstood. You know, he's just trying to figure out who he is, what he is, and everybody looks at him as this giant, Fucking green dude. Yeah, that was the bad. I don't know where I went with that one. Finds the little girl. The little girl. By the, uh, that's the scenes. lake or river or whatever the hell it was. The lake. And she's yeah. They're throwing flowers. Yeah. And, watching them float yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, that's just. Yeah, he's fine. Look, I mean, he was fucking happy. Mm -hmm. He's like, I got my flowers. I got a friend. Right. You know, it's a It's a great movie to. 
It's a good reflection movie. Yeah. God damn it. Hey. What, man? What are you doing, sleeping? No, nobody's, nobody's here. Oh, hey. Sorry, somebody's here, man. Let's yeah. Go back to playing the game. Jesus. Uh, welcome to Killer Beehive Video Rental. Uh, how can I help you? The Texas Chainsaw Man. It's a fucking sweet movie, dude. I love that movie, but we yeah. don't rent it out here, Thank man. Thank you. Thank you. We don't have uh, that movie. We got, we, well, I mean, we guys, really, technically, we got it, but we don't got it, man. Uh, but, like, Maybe uh, maybe something else with a uh, chainsaw killer or something, man. Maybe something like that. Hey. Um, oh, dude, this one's perfect, man. Hold on. Uh, here we go, man. Uh, Motel Hell. If you've never seen this one before, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. So, like, it's like this dude and his, his sister, like, you, like if you're not careful, you think it's like his wife or something like that, a couple, it's not, I mean, it might be something like that, but it's, I don't think it's supposed to be like anything like that, but they have a, a motel, oh, Jesus. it didn't work that time either, man, shit. Oh, Jesus We gotta Christ. come up with something new. Uh, so, Motel Hell is uh, the brother and sister, and they run the motel, and they got a business also where they sell uh, sausage, man, right? And have you seen it? It's great. Hold on. Uh, and like they got a brother who's a, a, a cop or the sheriff or something. Right. And he finds out that they're actually uh, like fattening up their hotel guests, motel, because mo it's motel hell, not hotel hell. Uh, and God they're, they're fattening them up and turn them into sausage, man, and sell them to people. Sounds delicious. Hey, look, check it out, man. Uh, this Rory Calhoun's like last uh, thing. He was big in Westerns, man. You like Westerns? I'm not talking about Westerns. It's Just not. You, you ring, right. ring him up for the movie. All right. Good job, Al. Yeah, we're proud Motel of you. Hell. We're proud of you. Um. So now we're in 1932. Yeah. And in 32, we had three movies come out. We had Murders in, in the Rue Morgue. Right. We had The Mummy. Yep. You know, the one without uh, Brendan Fraser in it. I don't, right. I don't think he was a thought process at that point. No, no. And then we also know. had uh, <laughs> The Island of Lost Souls. Mm -hmm. um, I love The the Mummy. The Mummy's great. Uh, specifically for the the opening scene. The, the <laughs> tomb opens, the mummy just comes strutting out, and the guy fucking just starts laughing. The guy comes, you know, mm -hmm. from the other side, or uh, archaeological, mm -hmm. you know, guy comes back. And he's like, "Where'd he go?" And he's just fucking hysterically <laughs> laughing. Look, he went for a walk. <laughs> you know? um, and and with, love it. with the mummy, you get the next uh, performance in Universal Horror from Boris Karloff. Yes, as a motel. Yep. Um, so you again, I said, I said, I think I said earlier, you're gonna you see more of these guys because. It became right. their thing. They Game. became horror movie stars. Game attraction. You know, Game. it's it's comparable to you know any of the other mainstream, right? You know, horror actors. And you know, uh, uh, Bela Lugosi was uh, in Murders of the Rue Morgue. Yes, in the, in the Rue Morgue. Um. So yeah, I mean, that's uh, the old Dark House, Boris Karloff. Uh, yeah, you see a lot of that. The Black Cat. And this, you get. Both of the top dogs in there. Right. You get Bela Lugosi and uh, Boris Karloff. In probably one of the most forgettable movies <laughs> that Universal's ever made. It was, yeah. It, with that kind of but it's, star power, which, I mean, that was, well, for them, that was part star power. Well, right. And, and I think the only reason that it is is because there's not a real main. Like, so we, we've had Dracula, we've had the Invisible Man, and we've had Frankenstein. It was a good. It wasn't necessarily a monster, like like a like like we've seen with mm -hmm. Dracula and the Mummy and Frankenstein. And I think that reason right there is why right it becomes such a forgettable movie, unfortunately. Because really, in all honesty, every movie that Universal put out from thirty one to what was it fifty six, some fifty eight, some somewhere in the mid to late fifties. Yeah, they're all great movies. Oh yeah, especially when you take your self and kind of like 
Put yourself, put yourself in that position. Right, in that time frame. For the first time ever, we're starting to see an actual horror movie, you know, blossom. Right. Into what we know today. All the different variables of a good horror movie are all, you know, starting to come to fruition, you know, in this time frame. But next is one of your favorites. Is it, would that be The Bride of Frankenstein? The Bride of Frankenstein. The Bride of Frankenstein is great. Everybody needs a one. I li- absolutely. Uh, Get his bolts off. And, uh, I, like, um, my, like, honestly, my favorite scene of that whole movie is that part where he's coming in and he's talking to the doctor. Mm-hmm. And you, you actually, you get a lot more He. The, there's a lot more interaction word wise verbally with him. Well yeah, he's been uh, alive he's, for a few right. years now. He's yeah. learned some shit. Right. He can count. Um, you know, he knows his ABCs. Dracula probably helped him out with that. He's coming in, I think he's one uh 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 You make man like me? No. Woman. Friend for you. Woman. Friend. Yes, I want Fred like me. And I hadn't seen Brad before I saw uh, Weird Science. Jeez. <laughs> and and that was in in Weird Science. They're watching that, and right. the scene happens, and the guy's like, "Dude, what if we made a chick? Like, it'd be fucking awesome." Um, but that's that kind of led me. Yeah, I like comedies. They, that led me to uh, watching The Bride because I yeah, sometimes you get you know places through weird routes, but right. But uh, great movie and uh, Elsa Lanchester, like fucking. It's it's one of those movies for me. Like I, I saw it once. I thought it was a great movie, but I just I've not revisited that movie right. in forever because I like a lot more of them. It's not for everybody. Better. It's not for everybody. We don't I mean, all have good taste. Uh, <laughs> um, then you have Werewolf of London, right? Not American Werewolf in London. Yeah, different one. Big difference, but a werewolf nonetheless in the same location. And that one, uh, that one, I'd honestly never heard of before doing research for this. <laughs> I had never fucking heard of it. Before, so that's that's one that. For whatever reason, again, it's it's another one of the more forgettable. Just like you know, the Raven, right? You know, and and I don't and I say forgettable loosely. The overshadowed might be right. You know, a, a better term. You know, for these movies, because in all honesty, they are good. Um, but in thirty six, we get to Dracula's daughter, right? You know, and this kind of things got a little weird for me. Yeah, we're know, starting to money grab at this point. Yeah, and and that's and well, that never stopped. <laughs> no, but but they got funner. Oh yeah, yeah. This was a weird stage, you know, Dracula's daughter. Well, that's. But by was, the time you get into like the fifties, right? The Abbott and Costello stuff. Yeah, and just I mean, just the you know Wolfman meets Frankenstein, like. Right. Uh, the, like those crossover movies are, are a whole lot of fun. Yes. The, these these through this point in time, like I said, unless you've done research, unless you've looked into it, if you weren't born back then, or, or back, if you weren't coming up back then or right. alive back then, you, you don't know what these are. Right. For the most part, unless you've done extensive, like going back and watching this stuff, the night key. And this is all Boris Karloff, Bela Lugosi. He, they're in like all of these damn things. And I couldn't have told you nothing about it before sitting down and doing this research. <laughs> right. Um, even Son of Frankenstein, 39. Yeah, 39. Because if you if Dracula has a daughter, it's only fitting that Frankenstein, Frankenstein has, a son. has a son. And they meet and they make. Reanimated Dracula, Dracula Stein. Right, makes sense, right? Right. Uh, uh, come. Um, the Invisible Woman, the Mummy's Hand. Where, where do they come up with this shit? I don't know, but I think it. God, uh, we got to 1941. 
The Wolfman. I love the Wolfman. All right, so I have a special place in the cockles of my heart. Cockles for, again. Cockles again. I love that word. It's so just say it. Cockles. It's fun. I'm a ginormous fan of just special effects. Yeah. I'm a big critic of special effects. Right. I will specifically not watch movies because of shitty special effects. It doesn't stop. To me. It, to I'll call out the shit set special effects, but I'll still watch it. I won't, I won't watch it. No. <laughs> Like, I loved, 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 loved Mama until I saw Mama, and I won't rewatch it. Right. It's shit. It's just, but, but the Wolfman is not. The Wolfman. No. Especially so, for 41. So, right. 1941, we are entering World War II, and somebody decided to make one of the best transformation scenes in cinema history. Absolutely. You know, um, and in, in my Still. opinion, and I think it has something to do with just werewolves. That is iconic. Yeah. Because they figured out a lot of shit <laughs> to, to be able to make that work given what they had to work with. Like, Google for yourself what a typical camera crew had to work with <laughs> at, in that time frame, and it's not much. You know, they had to really get creative, layering, you know, taking films, splicing, you know, one over the other, over the other, drawn out. You know, I mean, it was a lot of shit. Um, but. And and in, in this one, we had the, the star of the movie was Lon Chaney Jr. Right. Yes. So it, we, we've come full circle with that. Yeah, the son um, of the first horror movie exactly. star of Universal. Um. But I think that that transformation scene held up as you know, the greatest transformation scene ever until you get to Amer America. Yeah, until you get to 81, 40 years later. Right. <laughs> you know, another fucking Wolfman change. And it's grotesque. And I love it. Right. <laughs> um, but for its time, it was almost witchcraft-like to have something right. like that happen. Good evening, folks, and welcome back to WPKV Action News. I'm Jeff Berghoff, and this here is Ben... Ben Jagenhoff. Nice ben to meet you. Jagenhoff. Ben uh, Jagenhoff. Joining us uh, today as... Uh, my co-anchor that looks quite a bit like uh, one of my brother's old co-anchors. Hey, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I'm just here to present the news the best way I can. It's a horrible disguise. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> to start news off, uh, starting April 1st, Pluto TV is celebrating halfway to Halloween with their April Ghouls Marathon. Throughout the entire month, you'll be able to stream a whole list of horror classics to hold you over until Sawin comes back around. Boy, that sounds exciting, doesn't it? You want to stop using that fucking accent? Again, I don't know what you're talking about. And that, no, no, just, 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 just Charles Walton. Just, I didn't say your name yet. Shit. Next. <laughs> uh. On March 23rd, AboveTheLawn.com announced Linda Blair would be reprising her role as Reagan in the upcoming Exorcist Legacy sequel. Man, I can't wait for that. Can you? Helmed by David Gordon Green and Blumhouse Productions, I think it's going to be amazing. Now, they haven't let out a whole lot of cats from this ear bag. However, I bet it's going to be fantastic. Sure it will, Charles. Birthdays. Ben, jigging off. Yes, Ben. Jagannath. Birthdays for the coming week include Rob Bottin, special effects makeup artist uh, for The Fall, The Thing, and Maniac. Uh, Lon Chaney, the man of a thousand faces. Hunchback and Notre Dame, fan of the opera. You know the guy I'm talking about. And A. Michael Baldwin of the Phantasm franchise. He played Mike throughout that entire franchise. Yes, he did. Except for part two. They changed it for part two for some reason. 
Also, you've got Anthony Perkins from the Psycho franchise. <clears throat> also, Roger Corman, who's pretty much the king of B-movies. And then you've got also Michael Rooker, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, Slither and the Walking Dead. So f***ing annoying with that accent. You are... Ne- uh, films release... what happens when you're from Australia. Sure. Sure. Um, tell me about Outback. Steakhouse, great. Blooming Onion. Yeah, that's what I thought. Was. What a dick. Films released. Dingo, um, my baby. Film celebrating anniversaries this coming week include The Thing from Another World, 1951, Basket Case, 1982, Dead Calm, 1989. Also, one of our personal favorites, Hatchet from 2006. Also, Grunhouse Death Proof and Planet Terror in 7, 2007. Evil Dead in 2013. So now we're now we're kind of rehashing in 42 because that's just the ghost of Frankenstein, the invisible agent, and then the mummy's tomb. Right. You know, so some more of those weird ones. That right. Just, you know, f- fillers. They're just they're trying to make some money. Right. 43 Phantom of the Opera. Right. Personally, I'm so 25 great. Phantom. I'm all about 25 Phantom, but 43 is not that's that one's not bad. Uh, Claude Rains. It's not. I like the. I like the makeup in Forty Three. Yeah. You know, just the the special effects things. They had time to sit there and think about it a little bit, right? You know, I I dig it. You know, after Phantom of the Opera, Dracula still can't pull out of a driveway. He has a son now. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I like that. Right, we're just mm. we're spitting kids left and right. Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, which is fucking great. It is. It is the start of tremendous things to come. With Good. Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, you have the first time that you see one of the other horror movie stars playing another one's. Original character. Yes. Because Boris Karloff is not the Frankenstein's monster in this one. Bela Lugosi is. Right. Which was I mean, a, little, a little weird, but it worked. Right. And if, and if you, I mean, if you're not really paying attention to it, like, you you could miss that back. Because they do all the same makeup and everything to it. Right. Uh, but <laughs> if you're paying attention, if you're looking, it's, it's pretty obvious that's not Boris Karloff. But... Either way, fantastic fucking movie. It's a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> Along with all the other, you know, crossovers that... Right, which because that will fast track us right to 1948 with Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Absolutely. That uh, This is where shit gets fucking fun. Um, it's, I'm trying to think of the, the quote. Somebody said something about uh, comedy and horror. It's it, They're like a coin flip away from each other. Yeah. Uh, in the way it works, like it, you can turn one into the other with one little one little change. Yep. Um, and that's what's beautiful about these movies. They, they have scary parts, but they're fucking hilarious because yes. of Adam and Costello right. uh, being there. So, God, could you imagine Frankenstein trying to do who's on first? Who's <laughs> on? The worst. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what? Um, but then you get you get a little bit of break because three years later in fifty one is when you get up and Costello meet the meet the invisible man. Right. Which still kind of baffles me is I don't know how you meet somebody that's invisible because you don't know they're there. Right. But hey, you know, fucking Maybe it's Hollywood. He's wearing all his rapids. Yeah, me. his rappings, his bandages, <laughs> and his sweet fucking aviators. Mm. And a fedora. I think he wore a fedora also. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, he wore your standard, you know, triple X movie section creep outfit. Right. With some band-aids on his face. Right. <laughs> um, But the Abbott and Costello, you know, meet Frankenstein and meet the Invisible Man. Are funny. There's a lot of there's a lot of Scooby Doo reference stuff, right? In those two movies, again, 
why I wanted to wear this. Um, that's where that's that's where you know and you could whoever made Scooby Doo watched these things. Shit, yes, they did. Oh, and wow. They smoked a lot of weed and watched a lot of old Universal movies. And I'm 100 percent for it. Right. Um. But <clears throat> there's you know was I think it's Frankenstein. Yeah, it's, I think it's Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I think it's when you get the first door scene. Yeah, you know, where it's the hallway and they're entering. Yeah, right. like one door coming out another, you know, just all over the damn place. Yeah. And it's it's dumb comedy for today's standards, but it was peak comedy for... It's so fucking great. Yeah, I, I mean, it. I still think it's fantastic. <laughs> I will watch it and still giggle. But, you know, for its time, that was... That was the that was comedy at its great. That was Eddie right. Murphy raw status, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you are you want me to start? Great stand. Yeah. There's a great stand up album. Um, after that, though, we have 1954. Yes, you you're taking the lead on this one, buddy. I love I love it too, but I don't think I could like put I'm that glad. put that thing away. All right, I'm glad and that just... coffee mug is sitting there, or else this show might be canceled. Um, we're two, two episode flops away from that anyway. So, uh, but you finally get the creature from the Black Lagoon, right? I am in love with the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> How no. fucking standing movie it is! You finally get like a whole. I'm not, God, hang on, I don't even know where to fucking begin with this. <laughs> it's an actual monster, and it induces a, another realm in horror because now it's something underwater right. that you cannot see. Right. And that brings a whole other realm of you know, just terrifying, you know, fear inducing. You know, right. emotions. Jaws would not be funny if Jaws was in a Walmart parking lot. Or scary, whatever. I was going to say, Jaws would be hilarious. <laughs> you know, take, Jaw, take Bruce out of the water and put him in a trailer park. And he's not scary. He's that's lunch. That, that's the coin flip for comedy. Right. There you go. <laughs> we talked about, you know, Frankenstein, like, being misunderstood. He's a monster, but he's not a monster. This thing's a full fledged like evil ass. Right. This thing is trying to <laughs> fucking murder you. Then that's its sole purpose. Right. <laughs> Get out of my lagoon, you son of a bitch. <laughs> the, the fucking the design of that creature. First off, the the the, the fossilized hand, hand yes. that they find. I would have been the fuck out of there. <laughs> I'm not waiting around to try and figure out what that used to be. <laughs> right. Because the small possibility that there might still be one around is enough to fuck me up. I don't know. I'm enough stereotypical, you know, white male lead horror movie to try to stick around and find out what it is. <sighs> no, I, I'm not. I'm not quite, you know, go investigate the noise at the long end of the long dark spooky tunnel. Right. But we find an artifact. <laughs> we might dig a few holes. <laughs> and the, but I mean, the whole thing because it was obviously like humanoid, just the shape of the hand. You knew. You know, it was some kind of humanoid thing. I and, would take it and put it on my man. I mean, yeah, I'd probably take it. I'm not going to investigate it. <laughs> I mean, I might find, you know, there might be another. Where there's one hand, there's typically another. Well, that's what got them in so much trouble, is they went looking for the rest of it. What happens to most After, stereotypical white people in movies? Come back and find people they left there to guard the fucking place dead as fuck. See, at that point, I'd run. See? In 54... The fact that they were able to make a suit that, yeah. that legitimately looked like some kind of humanoid fish monster. Right. The fact that he could actually swim underwater whilst wearing right. the suit. Which that was... Is you know, impressive in that time. That was the, the the guy who did all the underwater stuff. He just, just passed away like... A few weeks ago. I he know. was the last living person that played, and he didn't play the, the monster in every scene, but all the underwater stuff, all that stuff he did. Was it like Rico or Riku Browning or something like that? I think that's what it is. 
I'd have to, I'd have to go back and look. That's what I'm doing now. Um, but yeah, he was the last. He he was the last surviving actor uh, slash stuntman to have played one of the original Universal monsters on screen. Um, and yeah, passed away unfortunately. There he is. There guy. Yeah, yeah, Rico Browning. Yeah. So and uh, God, he was. But just look at that suit, man. Right. It's so awesome. And yeah, I love the the after uh, and our, the behind, behind the scenes, scenes shot of him, him you know, kissing, the, kissing uh, the chick. Yeah, I mean, it was fucking great. You had Revenge of the Creature the very next year. Yes, because like the because it did right. so fucking good. It was it was. Instant fucking success, much like predecessors like Dracula and the Invisible Man and Frankenstein. I mean, it was instant. Everybody, I want to see more fucking radioactive fish man come fuck shit up. Well, well, no, he wasn't radioactive. No, not yet. Yeah, we're 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 not. We haven't gotten into the atomic age of horror. (laughs) Oh, right. Uh, Which, which we're not necessarily. We're talking about the classic stuff right right now so we're not going to get into the atomic age uh, aside from saying the classic stuff kind of ran until the atomic age took over right you started getting one door closes another one opens right Hey there, champ. Champ, hey. Come on, man. Hey, pal. Yo. Ah, oh, man, no, man. Not cool, bro, sir. Hey, look, sorry about that, man. I, I was trying to get your attention, and you were just kind of doing your own thing there, pal. No, no I mean, it's cool, man. I can still see. <laughs> uh, welcome to Killer Beehive. How can I help you, man? Uh, do you have any of the of the horror movies, you know, just for just for the adults? Oh, yeah, I got you, man. Like, like most of the horror section is already so adults only, even though, we, like, we sometimes run them out to the teenagers. <laughs> Talking, you know, the like the the special time, you know, kind of kind of adult movies, you know, alone time, you know, you know, kind of thing. Not sure, like, what you mean. Oh, you mean poor man? Yeah, I got you, dude. What? No. Uh-uh. That, that's that's not what I'm not what I meant. Absolutely not. We got Hamstroker's Wackula. We got the Amityville Horrors, man. Uh, not with the H, with the W, right? Uh, I think we've got a mom? misunderstanding. All right, you know who 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 would even watch that kind oh, of? Oh, dude, we got Fatasm with the chrome balls that come flying through and finish you off. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, speaking of balls, dude, we got balls. Balls 2, Balls 3D, and Balls the Revenge. The last one's a little weird though, dude, because his, his chode roars. I don't know. I don't balls! Get no, no balls. No, no, no balls at all. Uh, Cockraiser 3, Hell on Girth. Um, oh, we got we got chode. Look, I, I think we just have a misunderstanding from the whole thing. So I'm I'm trying to find new lawnmower blades, you know, for for my mower, and I must just I must just come um, in the wrong door. Lumpkin head. Oh, Hallow Cream, the night he came. It's the 78 version, man, because uh, his dick has sideburns. Can't fucking forget Tit, man. Uh, dude, I'm not going to spoil anything for you if you haven't seen it, but, like, the clown makeup alone made me finish it. The storm drain scene, dude. It's- Jesus, kid! You got to check it out. Where are you going, man? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Uh, did I hear you say you had Tit and Hallow Cream? Oh, yeah, man. Absolutely. Two of my favorites, man. Ah, oh, awesome. You know, I've, I've been I've been looking for these for a while. Thank you. Very Enjoy. Much. Right. Um, but it, it, 
immediately following Revenge of the Creature, you did get another Abbott Costello uh, mashup with the mummy. <laughs> and fucking A, great again. It's Abbott and Costello, and that was pristine shit. Right. <laughs> Back then. And then, lastly, in 1956, to close it all out, you get The Creature Walks Among Us. Right. Um, but you know, people in 56 didn't know there was never going to be another universal yeah, movie monster after right. that. Right. Like, there were there were a few after, yeah. but it wasn't, it it wasn't, wasn't the anything. magic that those right. others were. So. Um, but, uh, you know, I look back on it now as a bittersweet kind of thing. Oh, yeah. You absolutely. know, it's... Every time I watch it, I get a little upset on the inside because I know there's nothing really after that. Right. Um, I mean, we did we did end up we started to get the Hammer Horror, uh, which are are great in their own. It's not the same, right? Uh, but they're great in their own right. Uh, and, Christopher Lee and all, yeah, yeah, they're they're good, but it's not. Uh, I got really excited, you know, as a kid. My mother despises. Like anything remotely scary, right? She does not like language, blood, guts, anything. Um, and she was the one that introduced me to the universal, you know, universe. Right. You know, because she was the kid, you know, staying up late to watch the Wolfman, right? You know, before the TV went off the air. <laughs> to put that one in perspective, right? <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, but that wasn't that long. Like, I, yeah, your mom was older than me. But like, I remember as a kid when that that still happened. I guess the regular that, I channels. Guess, I guess that did happen. The regular mm-hmm. channels still did that. If you had cable, which I didn't fucking have, uh, <laughs> you could watch right. stuff all night. But yeah, like three ten and thirteen, those would still like two a.m. Yeah, good night, <laughs> folks. Right. Oof. That kind of wraps up the the uni- classic Universal monsters. Yes, um, um, all of which I have a, a deep love for. Um, yes, and because we wouldn't have horror as we know it without them, right? We be we we might still we might have still gotten there at some point, but everything would be delayed. We would not have what we right, have we, today. We might be in the radioactive stage today. Right. Which, I mean, wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. Not necessarily. You know, them attacking the 50-foot woman. The I mean, brain that didn't die. Hell yeah. I, st- I still watch all that shit. I would too. Fuck yes. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got a fucking stack of them right over there. <laughs> uh, but, um, but yeah, I mean, what more is there to say? If y'all haven't watched these or if you haven't seen them, at least get the, the main... The main ones. Every year at around Halloween time, specifically Walmart, yep. but other stores like Walmart will always put out their Halloween scary movie things. Like one year they'll all be black with orange words. One year they'll be black with green words. Right. But there's, you can always find some kind of collaboration set, you know, for relatively cheap, you know, we're right. 40, 50 bucks here and there. Um, of all of these universal ones, fucking, they're probably on Shutter. They're fucking. I mean, they, they usually they usually pop up on Shutter, Tubi, places like that. Um, that time of year, just remember if you buy them. Typically, and this is nobody told me this, uh, but typically when you go to buy them, it make sure you get in the the eight eight pack set. Yes. Uh, that yeah, that's the f- original movie of each one of the original classic monsters. Yes. Uh, if you get the six disc set, they the six disc set only has Dracula, Frankenstein, Invisible Man, Bride, uh, the Mummy, and the Wolfman, and it leaves out leaves out the creature and and uh, what's the other one? Um, I can't remember what the other one is. But it leaves it leaves out the creature and no and, and, and the creature's like the creature has to fucking be in there. Right. So he's the best one of them all. Right. Um so just just keep that in mind because I I ended up finding a, a Blu-ray set that had all eight of them in there. Um but I almost got that six 
six disc set and they had to buy the creature separately. Right. So I mean I did both. Like, I bought the eight set and I bought creature on its own just to right. fucking have it. That's, well I think that about wraps it up for this episode there, kids. And this was a good one. Thank you for following. Thank you for watching. Um like, subscribe, help feed and clothe us. Right. See you next week.